Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. It's that time again. More bedtime tales. Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. Stories that are actually two minutes. Thereabouts. And we're getting near the halfway mark. Hmm. So let's begin with Prince Jolly Roger. Ooh, pretty art there. Prince Jolly Roger was a royal prince who sailed the seven seas with a parrot called Perkins and a ship's cat named Monty. One day, Prince Jolly Roger discovered a secret island. It was very beautiful with beaches of silvery sand, turquoise blue tide pools, and lush green palms. Monty curled up in a nice shady spot under a date palm and Perkins perched on top of a tall coconut tree. Now I must dig for treasure said Prince Jolly Roger, who knew this was the sort of thing pirates did on desert islands. He took a spade from the ship, but then wondered where to start. It's a pity I haven't got a treasure map, he thought. Then he saw that Monty had woken up. He was digging a very neat hole in the sand. Something gold could be seen glinting in the hole. You clever cat, said Prince Jolly Roger. I do believe you've struck treasure. Prince Jolly Roger dug deeper. He found a golden crown studded with emeralds. Prince Jolly Roger put it on his head. Long live the king, cried Perkins. And so it was that King Jolly Roger ruled over his very own island with his two loyal subjects, Perkins the parrot and Monty the cat. That was cute. Uh, just, you look at the ship in that picture and like, uh, he had to have a crew for a ship that big. Yeah. That's still a cute story. Mm-hmm. And, yes, both a prince and a pirate. So, was he really a pirate, or was he a prince playing at pirate? Yeah. Also, there's the cute kitty sitting underneath the tree, and the parrot in the tree. And the island is bigger than Judy's island, which is nice. Yes, quite nice. You couldn't walk on, well, I don't know if you could call it walking, but you couldn't walk on her island. This mm -hmm. one, you can take a nice stroll. Oasis in the Desert. Camel the Camel, Ouch. yes, it really says that, K-A-M-I-L, the C-A-M-E-L, was feeling hot and thirsty. He had been trekking across the desert for ages. Suddenly he became very excited, for there, far away in the distance, he could see a lovely pool surrounded by palm trees and other camels bending to drink. Hmm, an oasis, he cried, but his master, Ahmed, shook his head. No, camel, that's only a mirage, a reflection in the sand. There's no water there at all. Camel sniffed the air. Ahmed was right. He couldn't smell any water. On and on they plodded until, at last, Camel really could smell water. He could see exactly the same scene as he'd spotted earlier, but this time there really was an oasis, and Camel had a long, cool drink. I'm not quite... That's one of those stories where I'm like, it just... Is. Yeah, a, a camel was thirsty and got a drink. Yep, maybe it was trying to illustrate mirages. What was kind of interesting about this is the fact that they ran into the oasis, the same oasis, and it was actually real. So technically they could actually work because all a mirage is, is heat distorting light near the sand. So that's what makes you think there's water there. But in this case, it probably just sort of the light so you actually saw the oasis that was actually further down. The oasis that was actually further away. That would make sense. And now, old and new. Dad had bought a very old-fashioned wind-up phonograph in a junk store. There were even some records to go with it. I remember those tunes, said Grandma dreamily as Gail wound it up. My, that takes me back. And Grandma started waltzing round the living room. Teach me to waltz, Grandma, begged Gail. And Grandma did. One, two, three, one, two, three. Disco dancing, said Grandma, isn't real dancing. But it's fun, Grandma, said Gail. And she fetched her cassette player. I'll show you. Not like the old times, grumbled Grandma. But soon her feet were tapping to the beat. And she started jogging around and twisting. Brilliant, Grandma, laughed Gail. Cute, but another one of those stories that's kind of 
just is? Yeah, it didn't really go anywhere. It had potential because the mixing of old and new and Gail learning the old dances, grandmother learning the new dances. They need like another half a page. Also, I'm not quite sure if they're actually disco dancing. What John Travolta popularized in Saturday Night Fever is not actually disco dancing. Oh, oh, I know that, but I've actually listened to podcasts that actually talked about disco and dancing and where it came from. Still nice artwork. The illustrator really nails a lot of these pages. Katie the Kangaroo. Katie the Kangaroo was lonely. Her son, Joey, had left her pouch two days ago, and she missed him very much. Now he was able to look after himself. Kitty hopped around the safari park and chatted to the giraffes and elephants, but she still felt lonely. There's nothing like having someone in your pouch, she sighed. Beyond the safari park lay a field, and in that field were some sheep with their families. Kitty knew them well. Kitty kangaroo, said prudent sheep. Just the animal. My little lamb, Bobby, gets bored so easily that I was wondering... Well, whether you could take him for a trip around the safari park? Kitty was delighted, and from then on, she was never lonely again, for she took little Bobby Lamb on a trip in her pouch every single day. Until he gets too big. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not going to take him too long to outgrow that. Uh, also, I don't think most kangaroos get lonely when their pouch is empty, because the roo hangs around a lot. Just because they no longer have to be carried doesn't mean they're ready to be on their own. They still have a lot to learn. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> I'll let you know what I just saw once we get there. <laughs> ah, then in the meantime, a post-Christmas Christmas story. Glowworm Lights. Grendel Goblin was preparing for Christmas. He had made a splendid holiday wreath which he hung on his front door and his kitchen was filled with all sorts of wonderful spicy smells as he stirred the pumpkin pie filling and baked batches of Christmas cookies. But Grindel still wasn't satisfied. What I'd really like is a Christmas tree, he said to himself. So he went into the forest and spotted a nice little Christmas tree. It was neither too small nor too large, and his gold and silver pine cones would look very good on it. But a Christmas tree's no good without lights, and I don't have any wailed Grindel. Excuse me, whispered a little voice. Perhaps we can help you, and you can help us. Grindel looked down at his feet and saw a tiny glowworm, shivering with the cold. We don't like the winter, said the glowworm. If you take us into your nice warm cottage, we could hang on your tree and light it for you. What a splendid idea, said Grindel. And so the glowworm, together with lots of his friends and relations, Followed Grindel as he carried the Christmas tree home. That Christmas, Grindel's Christmas tree, shining with soft glowworm lights and covered with silver and gold pine cones, was quite the most beautiful in the whole of Goblin Town. I need to look up what goblins are supposed to look like because that does not look like a goblin. That, that is a consistent observation throughout this book, but look at that trail of glowworms. That's a lot of glowworms. Then I remember the series and toys. Mostly the toys. The series mainly because it was right on before Gen 1 MLP. Ah, really nice art. I just, like I said, I need to, like, okay, were there different versions of goblins? Is it more of a catch-all term than we think it is? Yeah, because goblins have fangs and are usually ugly, and there's a bunch of other negative stuff that's usually associated with a goblin. And none of these goblins have looked like that. They look more like fairies or pixies. Or the Goblin King. Yeah. Where you're like, how is that related to any of that? That's not even the right words. <laughs> I hit something, yes? No? <laughs> okay, the Emperor's New Clothes. As you can tell what I reacted to. Quite. There was once a very vain emperor who loved new clothes more than anything else in the world. One day, two tailors appeared at the palace. They promised to make him a suit so fine that only the cleverest people would be able to see it. The emperor was delighted and watched the two tailors as they stitched away. But he couldn't see any cloth or any thread. If I say I can't say anything, everyone will think I'm stupid, thought the emperor. So he held his tongue. 
The Chancellor and the courtiers didn't want to be thought stupid either, so when they saw, or rather didn't see, the suit, they clapped their hands and cried, What a magnificent suit! Such wonderful colors! Such fine embroidery! The Emperor decided to wear his new suit at his birthday parade. Ah! <laughs> Crowds of people turned up to see him, but as they had already heard all about the invisible suit, they too pretended they could see it. Only one small boy in the whole city hadn't heard about the suit, and he cried out, But the emperor hasn't any clothes on! And after this, all the emperor's subjects roared with laughter and cried, He's right! The emperor hasn't any clothes on! As for the two tailors, they sped as fast as they could out of the city and were never seen again. Ah, the con game. That actually, they actually did a pretty good job of compressing that. Mm-hmm. Because it's usually a much longer tale. There's a whole thing of a couple of days where they trick him over and over again. I like the one done by Canon Films under um, MGM. It has a little bit of a musical numbers to it as well. Because they actually claim to be making the fabric out of gems. Mm. So the emperor provides them gems, they go hide the gems, and then pretend to weave a fabric. Hmm. I also remember there was this version where it was part of this series of like episodes they did on TV with, the, with these two people being um, like storytellers, and they're actually in the stories, and they pretend to be the two tailors, mm. Trick King, and, and you... I, 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 hmm... I don't know how much of that I can actually put as a thumbnail. Maybe just the top, or maybe just... I'm thinking, like, just the top section. That should be fine, because guys get the pass on the top being... I was just thinking, oh, oh, yay, Google's algorithm. Yeah, maybe... <laughs> not to mention Tumblr. <laughs> oh, let's not even start with Tumblr. All right, and two fairy tales in a row. The Sleeping Beauty. Once there was a king and a queen whose little daughter was going to be christened. The queen chose seven fairy godmothers for the child, who all promised her health, wealth, and beauty. Alas, the king and queen forgot to invite one bad fairy. In her spite at not being invited to the christening, the bad fairy said that the princess would prick her finger and fall asleep for a hundred years. The king and queen immediately banned all sharp needles from the kingdom. But somehow, one was missed, and when the princess reached her 18th birthday, she found it and pricked her finger. She fell asleep at once, and the entire palace with her. Time passed, and tales of the sleeping princess were told to princes in other lands. Many searched for the palace, but it had become so overgrown with trees and thorn bushes that none of them succeeded. Then, just 100 years after the princess had fallen asleep, a handsome young prince stumbled across the forest. He hacked his way through the trees and thorns until he reached the cobweb-covered palace and all its sleeping inhabitants. He entered and soon found the princess asleep on her bed. He thought she was beautiful and kissed her. She awoke and fell in love with the prince straight away. Then everyone woke up. The prince and princess were married and they all lived happily ever after. Though interesting because in this version, the bed fairy says the princess would fall asleep for a hundred years. But in the last paragraph, just one hundred years after the princess had fallen asleep. So at that point, wouldn't she have woken up on her own based on the strictures of this particular story? I'm thinking the fact that he arrived is what actually... Also, that is no Maleficent. Nope. <laughs> mm -mm. And also in this day and age, really, you find a pretty girl asleep in her bed and you kiss her? Yeah, it's a lot better than some of the other versions of fairy tales. Oh, boy. Oh, no, no, no. This one is much darker in the earlier versions. Where it's actually the pain of childbirth that awakens her. Oh, really? I forgot about that version. Yeah, and she slept through everything before that. So, the princes in the earlier versions did a lot more than steal a kiss. Quite. You have now been educated. <laughs> fairy tales are dark, scary things. Disney lied. <laughs> this is why the phrase Disney Rise ha has come about. Because seriously. Seriously. 
I mean, The Little Mermaid. A lot of them, like, really ended badly. The Missing Triangle. Sunita was going to play a triangle in the school orchestra. She was very proud of the little tune it made when all the other instruments were silent. But on the day of the concert, she couldn't find her triangle, even though she ran all over the house looking for it. I must have it, she wailed. The whole tune will be ruined without it. More triangle. <laughs> then suddenly, she heard a faint tinkling sound coming from the hall closet. She opened it, and there was her little brother, Prabber, playing her triangle. Pretty tune, he said, and grinned impishly. Sunita couldn't be mad. He looks so funny. When I come back from the concert, I'll teach you to play properly, she promised. Prabber was delighted, and at the next concert, they both played the triangle. Ting, ting, ting. <laughs> yeah. What's really nice about this piece is the closet actually is... Well, at least the cutout of the closet in this particular art piece is a triangle. And there's actually two triangles in this because there's a set of instruments at the top of the page. And then there's the closet with the kid in it. There's mm -hmm. a vacuum cleaner, some rather large brushes, brooms. What is that, wrapping paper? Um, I always thought they were rolled rugs or bolts of fabric. Ah, I'm going to go with rugs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as is my want with the Bedtime Tales books. I read however many stories it feels like makes up an episode. So this has been another episode of Bedtime Tales, written by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. If you haven't picked up a copy of this yet, I'm sure we're still putting up a link, along with the ever-present Ebates link, and probably a link back to Ember's Emporium of Everything. I don't update it every week, but I do try to put various tips, tricks, hacks, recipes. And as always, Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel or anything else we happen to create, produce, share, etc. Thanks again for listening.